Welcome to the BIF Talks of the 36th Braunschweig International Film Festival. We talk with our guests about the latest film, the filmmaking process, and we take a closer look behind the scenes. My name is Julia Rutkowska, and I am very happy to welcome my two guests, Tina Hrabsdorter, director of Quake, and music director Sven Gerson. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Tina, Saga is 30 years old, she's a mother of a son, and one day she has an epileptic seizure. How does this change her life? Can you tell us a bit about her story? It changes her life drastically because um, she, at that point in the film, she hasn't had an uh, epileptic seizure uh, for 12 years or something like that. Not after she became a mother. So this was a disease that she thought she could keep down with medicines and didn't have to worry about, but at a certain moment in her life, when her son is about six years old, she, and she's very pressured, she feels a pressure from writing and, and delivering her novel because she's a writer and she's newly divorced and there's a lot of pressure in her life. So um, she all of a sudden get this epileptic seizure, which is, um, in my head as a storyteller is a kind of a metaphor for a breakdown or a burnout where you just hit the wall, it's just too much, you have to stop, something changes. So there's a lot of things in the story and in the film that is uh, quite uh, metaphoric. She loses her memory as a result of the epileptic attack and uh, that is a kind of uh, reincarnation or a, or something that makes her, pushes her to uh, start again, to see her life, her situations, her child, her, 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 her family, everything that is within her ne nearest um, surrounding with different eyes because the things, the information that she had before the epileptic attack are gone. So um, yeah, that changes her life drastically. So. Quake is an adaptation of a book. Um, how do you make a film out of a book? How did you work on the script? It's a challenge. It's a great challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, when I read the book, I instantly felt strong connection to what the main character goes through. I could uh, relate to so many things that she went through that I had experienced myself. Because this... Um, uh, this uh, journey of her from denial to acceptance is something that I felt not just interesting as a storyteller as but also because of my own personal experience so I felt the urge to try to um, portray that in the script and got the filming rights and 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 everything but I didn't want the audience to feel that this was a film made from a book I wanted to 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 skip characters change a lot of things to make it into a visual film and to be able to do that you have to um, yeah as I said change a lot of things you have to even come up with things you have to add characters you have to add scenes you have to add situation but in the meantime you always have to be very Uh, loyal to the core story of the novel. You can't change the core story. This is a novel about this. But the way you tell the story, the same story, can be different. So, Öður Jónsdóttir, the author of Quake, the novel, she gave me the permission to um, be quite um, drastic in changing things and, and adding things and eliminating things. And uh, So, to me, that was the most important thing as a writer, making, writing a script based on a novel, uh, to be able to do it my way. So, so yeah. you always have to keep the story in mind, but yeah. also forget the story. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of, yeah, it's a, it, it's a balance. It's a tricky balance because uh, um, if you're not true to the core story, this, is, this becomes a different story and then, it, then it's not based on the book. And, And, and so, but um, to me, the core story was so clear and it was so strong. The, the journey f that Saga goes through was so um, emotionally um, 
encouraging, or how do I say it in English? It was so uh, appealing, in my, in my opinion, that I knew that although I would change the way to tell the same story, I would uh, be able to keep it as interesting as the novel, because I loved the novel, it was very good, but novels are so different from, from films. So you need to be very, um, as an author, I think you need to be quite open for these changes because in the end it will always benefit the novel also because we're all doing, we're all saying the same story and we're just trying to uh, do it in the right way because, as I said, novels and films, they are so different. Yeah, but in the end it's about the story, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Sven, did you also read the novel or did you just work with the script as uh, the music director? I just worked with the script as the novel. I, uh, I mean, I, I, of course I read the novel, but uh, not until afterwards. So it's, uh, but uh, now, and it's interesting what she says because, uh, you know, that's uh, when you have, when you have, uh, like this uh, this story it's, and there's a lot of that goes on in, 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 the, in the in the literature that doesn't doesn't come out and you have to be true to both the literature and the form of the film the film when you do a film the film is the king how was the working process between you both you also acted um, yes, I, yes, I, I acted also, and I'm also her husband. So <laughs> <laughs> Is it more difficult I mean, then? No. <laughs> it's not, because no. she's a great director, and uh, it's so easy <laughs> to work with great directors. <laughs> so I trust her completely, and uh, I'm in such good hands, so it's... Uh, yeah, we, we worked a lot together, so we know this. Uh, we, we have experience of working together, so... And, my, and in my mind, if... if if you're a if you're a couple and being able to work together that's a huge benefit but if, if it doesn't work then it doesn't work but uh, we're, we're very good friends and we motivate each other he motivates me when I am with my ideas and what I want to do and I motivate him and with, for his projects and and the music and everything so it's a kind of a, yeah it's a win-win situation I believe but also I mean when I casted him in this uh, part, it was not because he was my uh, husband. I, as, he, as he said, the film is the king. I always find it so important to, to take all the relationship out, not hiring my friends or anything. It's just like, you know, the film is the king. What benefits the project, the film, is what matters. So I did really felt that he had the charisma that uh, was very, important for the role he plays, Berger, which is Saga's ex-husband. Uh, Tina, you've been an actor uh, before. Um, now Quake is your uh, debut feature film. What did you learn from this project for your um, future work, be it in front or behind the camera? <coughs> I learned a lot. I mean, um, for me, I always see myself because I have so uh, different positions, many positions. I act, I write, I, I direct, and I produce. I'm also uh, producing one, one, uh, the, uh, one of two producers of uh, the film Quake. Um, in my eyes, in my head, I am a storyteller because being a storyteller combines all of those, uh, uh, all of those uh, positions. So. Um, what I have learned is that it's a great, I really feel that because I am a trained actress, I went to a acting school, it helped me a lot to be an actress when I was directing my actors. Because I know the language, I know what this is that the actor is going through. So to be able to build the trust and, and, and have the communication that are needed between directors and actors was very, I felt really um, confident in the in the seat of the director. So um, I love doing both, but to me, as I said, it's um, it's not about I want to act, I want to direct. It's just like 
I want to tell this story. This is a story I need to tell. Should I write it or should I just direct it or should I act <laughs> in it? What benefits the project? So it's a kind of a, I love doing, doing, doing all of these things. And should I just produce it and maybe have some other direct it? It's a kind of a, it, it's a, it's a strange feeling, but I love it. I love to, um, it, it, it feels to me like I'm doing something that I'm supposed to do. This is a story I need to tell the world. So whatever benefits, I, mean, I, I don't need to do all of these things myself. It's just like, what, what is the best thing to do now? And I really feel, uh, because I have been acting in other projects, so I'm quite experienced in acting in front of the camera. So that also gave me a... Uh, confident to do both. So uh, you also play Saga's sister, yeah. and uh, this is, was another possibility for you to tell the story from yeah. different views. Yeah, but it? in the yeah. beginning I wanted to have another actress to play Saga, uh, because it, I felt it is a little bit of a challenge, because this was my first feature to also, also act in it, but the actress I wanted to have, she needed to go to another another project that she was producing herself. So she had to skip uh, the role of uh, Johanna, but, and that was just a few days before we were about to shoot. So it was just like, okay, we lost her, what shall we do? You just do it, you, you know the story, you wrote it, you, uh, yeah, I'll do it. So it's the kind of uh, thing that happened, it wasn't intentional from the beginning, but, um, so as, you, as your question was, did you learn something? I, I learned a lot of, from it. So actually in my next uh, project, which is a TV series that I'm shooting now, uh, I'm just taking a, a short break from it for being here. Um, I also have a role there, a much bigger role. And yeah, that has been going quite well. And uh, I have a really good co-director with me. So when I step in, uh, in front of the camera, she's my hat, she's my uh, other self. And uh, I have been talking to many other, especially women, uh, uh, female directors that, are that also act in their projects. And we all have the same story to tell. It's, um, it's like a calling. You sometimes, you just feel that I'm supposed to do this part. Uh, and you can't explain why, it's just uh, something that you feel, but then you do other projects and you don't feel the urge to play anything. It, yeah, it's strange, but I like it. <laughs> That's great. Saga is a writer. In the beginning of the film she tries to finish a book and uh, usually when a book is finished it's dedicated to somebody. Who do you to dedicate this film to? My two little boys, my two twins, that are today 10 years old. Um, because um, if I hadn't uh, became the mother of them, because I had to fight for them, I had to deal with infertility for five years. So when I finally managed to get them into my womb and raise them and, and give birth to them and see them just be healthy two little kids i felt that i could do anything because this was my biggest biggest victory and will always be my it, i mean this film I, I, quake is um, nominated for three awards here in this festival and if, if 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 everything goes well and i will get one of them or or or, or, or none of them or whatever it's okay because I have already won the biggest award in life, and those two. So uh, I always thank them for uh, having the having the courage, um, the confidence to do what I know that I can do. Because sometimes people are afraid and they stop because they doubt themselves and they just uh, you know I. I think I can do this, but no, 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 no. They just and when I just looked at my two little children that I fought for, and they were just smiling at me, I was just like, "Yeah, I did this. Now everything will be good, and I could do everything." It's quite uh, so. It, the film is definitely dedicated to them. It's everything you ever wanted. Yes.
that's the biggest victory of all. Sven, who do you dedicate this film to? Who would I dedicate this film to? I would, well, I would have to dedicate this film to, uh, uh, to my wife. <laughs> I mean, uh, because, uh, uh, because it was a, a special experience for me, uh, because I, I'm also a magician. And uh, it, it, it turned out to be uh, that uh, we had a, had a composer and he was doing his first film, but he's a contemporary a classical composer. And uh, so, uh, so it's, you know, to like adopt his music to the screen, uh, it came in, in to my part and, uh, and uh, it was very rewarding f for me. And, uh, and it turns out that I felt very good in that position. I wanted to mention that being a film music editor in Iceland is not common. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not common. I mean, it should be, but you know, being a music editor is something that that we are just stepping into or something. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think I'm, I'm I'm number six that has yeah. been in that position in Iceland. In Iceland. So really? usually it's just a, a just a, a dialogue between uh, the director and uh, the composer. and the composer and. Uh, well, uh, since I'm educated in the music, it was easier for me, and I know the the director very well, and I know her taste. So, so it was uh, it was kind of a rewarding experience. So, uh, so uh, you know, uh, that was a new thing for me. So, uh, of course, I acted in the movie also, but that I had done many times before. But, uh, but uh, it was so. I was. Uh, I was. It was sort of a break. Or, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, I was t because thankful he's very for talented. her. For, uh, I wanted to push him also. Yeah, you're so talented. You should do this. <laughs> yeah, right. Tina, Sven, thank you very much for taking your time, even though you have a lot of other projects, and we're excited to hear new stories from you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.